Okay, so the clock is ticking. We've got to move fast. So I want to talk about, of course, the microbiome, but I want to present a particular context. I want to uh, bring home the message of why the microbiome is such an important topic so that we be able to see the invisible and better understand why it must be playing a, a very profound role in our health. So the shift in our perception from bacteria as the enemy, as the, uh, the infectious agent, the pathogen that needs to be destroyed and killed, to the conception that we, we have today as actually not an enemy at all, but as our best friend, as an ancient friend, is this is the, probably the greatest shift, greatest turnaround in medicine in 150 years. So you can see that the scientific literature is, is full, is blossoming about the microbiome. But my interest in tonight's talk, again, is to explain why. Why is the microbiome so important to human health? What is, I want to show you the big context that will better understand why this is where many of our answers will be found. So this is a very important quote by the Mayo Clinic um, in their journal that, that the microbiome, the science, the medicine of the microbiome will be a very, very important topic that not just holistic, functional health professionals will be interested in, but the average doctor will need to know about this as much as he or she knows about genetics or the germ theory. This is why the microbiome is really the bridge between holistic and functional medicine and it will really unite the two um, as really one discipline with two sides of the opposite, uh, two sides of the same coin. So again, the context, bacteria, bacteria rule the world. Bacteria has a profound effect on every facet of life. If you understand that, it's a natural corollary to understand that it must be playing a profound role in our health. It just follows, like the night follows the day. Well, we know that the um, bacteria plays a significant role. Actually, it's bacteria that plays a very important role in carbon and nitrogen uh, recycling. Without bacteria, we would not have carbon in our bodies. We would not have nitrogen. It plays a critical role in, uh, in the, the soil uh, biome, <coughs> which is another topic in itself, terribly overlooked. In fact, I wanted to include a quote, but it was too late, um, from Leonardo da Vinci. And he said that we know more about the celestial spheres than we know about what's in the soil that we walk on. And he said this many, many years ago. The soil that we walk on are universes that play a profound role in our health. And just because we don't see it, it doesn't mean that it's not happening, that it's not playing a profound role. And this uh, uh, soil biome play, works together with the biome, the microbiome in our gut. Believe it or not, bacteria play a critical role um, in rain. Without bacteria, we would not have rain on this earth. The, we, we all know so much about the outer ecology. We know that the, the outer ecology is being affected negatively by many of the mostly due to human ac actions and activity, but we know much less about how that very similar activity is affecting the inner ecology. But we shouldn't be so surprised that if the outer ecology is being affected, the inner ecology is being affected as well. And by the way, the, the more we understand the outer ecology and why it becomes dysfunctional, the more we'll better we'll understand what hurts the inner ecology as well. Well, we, we all know now, or many of us know, that bacteria outnumber us 10 to 1. 
I always joke with my patients that when I introduce them to this topic that they're really looking at bacteria dressed up in a suit because we really are mostly bacteria. We are mostly bacteria. Now the microbiome, I, I, I came up with a number of uh, nicknames. Some of them are, are other people have described. It's the software of the body. Some people call it the forgotten organ. It's really not the forgotten organ because we never knew about it. It's the invisible organ. You know, when I was in medical school, we, we dissected cadavers, right? And they introduced us to all the organs, right? But there was one organ that they left out, the microbiome. Just because we can't see it, it doesn't mean that it's not there. The microbiome, what's important to understand about the microbiome, that it, it has tentacles that has far reach into virtually every aspect of our physiology. And it makes sense. If it co-evolved with us, it knows everything about us. It knows what's happening in the deep recesses of our physiology. We can't create a drug that can speak to our genes in multiple ways, but the microbiome knows how to do that. So additionally, it plays a critical role in the health of the gut. It plays a critical role in immunological function. It produces numerous uh, anti natural antibiotics. It plays a critical role in metabolism, in cal caloric restriction, inflammation, insulin resistance, improving uh, uh, villi microvascularization, tight junction permeability, etc. So th this article here is about how the, the, the crosstalk is, what, uh, is what's most fascinating is that the significant communication between the gut and the brain. And it does it in this, they, they, one, they speak the same language because the gut bacteria produce neurotransmitters. But two, even though they speak sometimes in different languages, they're translated for each other. So for example, the, the gut bacteria could speak to the brain via the immune system because um, <clears throat> if the gut bacteria are imbalanced, the microbiome is imbalanced, it can then uh, affect the immune system in the gut, which will then send messages to the brain. So, and that's sort of the translator. Additionally, it can affect the, send messages to the brain via the endocrine system, especially the uh, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. So here's just a basic description of some of the numerous effects that the microbiome has. It plays a critical role in autoimmune disorders. Uh, it plays a critical role in metabolism and weight loss. It plays a very, very important role in diabetes, type 2 diabetes, also type 1 diabetes, um, in, in its impact in both uh, preventing and even in the treatment of autoimmune disorders. It plays a very important role in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which, a, which is a growing epidemic uh, here in this country. Here's just a slide of some of the mechanisms of how the, uh, an abnormal microbiome may uh, affect the immune system, which then affects the gut wall, which then causes more inf inflammation, and a whole cascade ensues and, and this can directly affect the brain because when there's an, a hyperactive immune system in the gut, that would immediately, simultaneously be transmitted to the astrocytes, the immune system in the brain, causing brain inflammation. Well, this again uh, is about how the tight junctions are affected from inflammation. Um, Here's a slide about how both uh, irritable bowel syndrome and uh, you know, autoimmune disorders 
um, are, are affected by an abnormal microbiome. And while most of the research is showing association between an abnormal microbiome and various autoimmune disorders and, and a, a number of disorders, there are studies that are not as well known that actually show causal links, causal connections with the abnormal microbiome and uh, various autoimmune disorders. And, and the, the mechanisms have really been um, outlined in so many different studies. <coughs> Again, it can affect directly, it, it affects the immune system, an abnormal microbiome. It can directly speak to the genes, genes that code for inflammation and genes that turn off inflammation. It can directly uh, speak to the brain to change our desires for various foods. I mean, the, the, the effects are widespread. Five minutes, okay. This is a little bit about the, the signaling between the two uh, systems. It's a bi-directional, uh, multi-lane highway between the, the gut and the microbiome and the brain. <coughs> There's a, a very, very important role of the microbiome in depression. This is a big interest of mine, how the microbiome influences brain function, and it has a profound effect on the treatment of various uh, neurological disorders like depression and anxiety. And one of the very important points I want to make here is that it's, we shouldn't be focusing as much on the probiotics as we should be focusing on the prebiotics, because the probiotics are like, you know, tourists that come into a city and perhaps improve the economy for a few weeks or a few months, but it doesn't make the long-standing change. It has to come endogenously. It has to be the people working in the city that improve, that, that proliferate, that, that, that improve overall, uh, the overall economy in the city. And that's the prebiotic. So the real changes come when you create a whole program that is rooted in diet, in the types of foods you're eating, which I outline in my book, and in the prebiotics more so than the probiotics. And the studies are not focusing enough on the dietary changes and the prebiotics, and I can assure you, you will see much better, much, much better effects. Um, okay, just studies. Um, I don't need to go through it. I, I just important that you see that there's so much science behind this and the mechanisms are outlined and it's clear and we now know how to intervene on multiple levels to improve the microbiome so that the microbiome can then improve neurological function, improve immunological function, et cetera. Weight loss uh, and obesity, uh, we, we, we use prebiotics and probiotics. Numerous studies, again, not only show co correlation and association, but studies that show uh, causality and that if you use these treatments, you will see changes and positive results. <coughs> Prebiotics again. Um, <coughs> oh, this is important. What's, Im what's important about the gut, the microbiome, is that there's diversity, but there, they have to be somewhat alike too so that they communicate with each other. If they're speaking totally different languages, they can't work synergistically. Nice quote from Tolstoy. Uh, real quick, um, key points, and then I'll end over here. The <coughs> we have to understand the a critical connection between the microbiome and all aspects of our health. We can't separate the far reaches of the microbiome with every aspect of our physiology. You can't deny that truth. We have to learn how to use it to our benefit and to understand that if we take care of the microbiome, it will take care of us. Um, <coughs> this is an ancient friendly alliance and it, it, it's just like it play, the bacteria play a critical role in the health of our planet, it plays a critical role in human health. Um, <coughs> diversity, we have to think about diversity. It plays a very important role <coughs> in the health of the microbiome. That's why proton pump inhibitors are unhealthy for us. They, they cause a widespread issue problem 
the common denominator is it affects the diversity of the microbiome. It's about caring to care for others. That the microbiome is teaching us that when we eat, we should not only think about ourselves, but the people that we're living with, the little people called the microbiome. <laughs> when you go to the restaurant, order with, from your waiter what your microbiome wants. Well, think about them. Think about others. The others is us as well. We have to see ourselves as a super organism. We are super organisms. And we're, we're not independent, autonomous agents. We need everyone else, including the gut bacteria. Instead of thinking of <coughs> uh, bacteria that needs to be um, excised, killed, destroyed, we have to nurture them, <clears throat> but we have to think also about the context. Each bacteria in a particular uh, context or alone could be a dangerous bacteria that could hurt us. But in the right context, they're no longer the evil bacteria we thought of them. It's all about the context. And you can see this <clears throat> in, the, in the research. A study uh, will show that this bacteria is detrimental, and that somewhere else, it's beautiful. It has no harm. It's all about the context. So we have diversity, right? We have caring. <clears throat> we have the superorganism. We have unity in spite or because of multiplicity. <clears throat> There's no such thing as good and bad mi microbes. It's how they work together. A so-called <clears throat> unhealthy microbe could be healthy in a different context. I again, let's think about, instead of dumping probiotics, think about improving the health of the microbiome endogenously. And I, I was talking to Deepak Chopra. He, in his center, they have certain meditations to improve the microbiome. See, it's no joke. Let's think about pruning the microbiome to really think about caring and taking care of our, <coughs> excuse me, ancient friends. Thank you.